Hello learners, I am Dr. Usha Borkar. I am a teacher educator. In the last class, we had deliberated upon ICT in learning. We had explored the concept of ICT and we had seen that ICT is an integration of information technology and communication technology. We had also looked at the different tools of ICT and how they can be utilized in the process of teaching and learning. Let us now proceed ahead. Sir Peter Blake has said that new technology is common but new thinking is rare. With the rapid developments taking place in our society, every day there are new developments in the field of ICT. But how do we make use of this technology in our classroom is what is rare and hence as teachers we need to integrate ICT as effectively and as efficiently as possible in our classrooms. So let's have a look at that. We find that there are different stages of integrating ICT in our classrooms. The first stage is called as emerging stage of integration of ICT. This is a stage which is explored both by students as well as by teachers. This is where students as well as teachers discover which ICT tools can be used in the classroom generally as well as specifically. The emphasis at this stage is on development on, of ICT literacy and basic schools to use ICT. The second stage of integration of ICT is the applying stage. At this stage, one learns how to use ICT tools. For example, use of mobile technology in order to disseminate information in the classroom. So one learns and tries to explore general as well as specific application of ICT. This application is done in all possible areas of learning. I'm sure you may have heard how mobile technology can be used in order to assess students or it can be used to gather information. The infusing stage of integration of ICT is understanding of how and when to use ICT tools to achieve a particular purpose. For example, if we want to explain a situation where we cannot take our students to, then making use of videos is more effective. For example, if the students of today have to be sensitized to the incidences that have taken place during our freedom struggle, showing a video would become very, very effective. Or if you in geography, if you have to teach about different regions of the world using videos to transport our students to different places in the world would become more effective. Therefore, infusing stage of integration of ICT involves developing an ability to recognize situations where ICT will be helpful and choose the most appropriate tools for a particular task. Learners, beware, do not use ICT just because it is available, but use it judiciously where it would be more appropriate. So infusing stage of integration of ICT would mean using ICT tools in combination to solve real problems, situations where the students cannot get direct experience can be made very real with the help of situating tools that we have learnt about in the last class. Transforming stage of integration of ICT. This stage once again is something that teachers as well as students would, would feel where the learning situation is transformed through the use of ICT. Better retention of information better learning environment, better performance is something that can be brought about by integration of ICT. So, we find that approaching teaching and learning situations with specialized ICT tools would enable to achieve this stage of integration of ICT. Let us now look at the models of integration of ICT in the learning process. 
There are two models which we are going to be looking at briefly, Assure model and I care model. Assure and I care are terms which are acronyms. They basically stand for these steps. Assure model involves analyzing learners. When we say analyzing learners, it means understanding the needs of the learner. What do the learners require? Stating the objectives where we need to state the purpose of using ICT in the learning. Then selecting method, media as well as materials. Appropriate media as per the availability should be utilized by the teacher. Also, we must require learning participation. No learning would be effective without the learners being active. Any of these processes can be successful only when we evaluate. Evaluation is a feedback to the teacher to understand whether she has done the teaching learning process appropriately and if required, revise it so that it can be used more effectively in the next class. The second model is I care model. I stands for introduction, introducing to the students the content that you have to deal with. Connecting to the students. Now this connecting to the students can be done with the help of ICT. For example, using Google Groups in order to communicate information to the students. Using discussion forums to have discussions among the students or using chats in order to connect and understand the various opinions of different students. Planning out an activity. One can use cooperative learning strategy in order to have a structured environment of discussion. Helping the students to reflect. Reflect on the outcomes of the discussion. Whether the objectives with which the lesson has started has been fulfilled or no. And then extend. Reflection also gives rise to suggestions that the teacher can utilize in order to teach many more lessons and also utilize any drawbacks to rectify in the next lesson to come. Let us look at another model and that is called as systematic model. Systematic model involves six steps. Let us look at each of these steps in detail. The first step of systematic model is called as the problem statement. Problem statement describes the major problem or issues to be addressed in a topic. For example, what should we do as citizens of this country to take care of environmental degradation that is taking place all around us? Problem statement could be any situation from a particular content that you may be teaching. This problem statement serves as a starting point for ICT integration plan. In order to understand how we should take care of the environmental degradation that is taking place around us, we can explore and understand how people in different societies are taking care of this problem. This is where the students can make use of ICT. Then comes our learning objectives. Learning objectives specify the intended learning outcomes at the end of the topic. Learners, remember that we are using ICT, but our final objective is to ensure effective learning. And hence, specifying learning outcomes helps us as teachers to shape our way towards achieving those outcomes. Learning objective that is mentioned or written down by the teacher should be observable and measurable. We can use the ABCD model of writing the statement of learning objectives, where A is the audience, B is the behavior, C is the condition and D is the degree. ABCD model says that all these things should be mentioned in the statement of learning objectives. Okay, now let us look at the role of ICT in different types of pedagogical classroom processes. We find that if there is a teacher-centered approach used in the classroom, then the teacher here is a source of knowledge. The teacher here 
is more active and students receive the information passively. Hence, our learning objectives could be designed keeping in mind what kind of approach we are utilizing in the classroom. When we are having a teacher-centered approach, the ICT tools can be used by the teacher for presentation and performance. The teacher can make use of handouts, overhead projector, slide capture in order to retain the learner's attention. If the teacher is making use of learner-centered approach, here the learner would be the knowledge seeker. The teacher would then just be the facilitator and guide. The learner would be more active, talking, doing in the process of learning. And hence the teacher designs and manages the setting as well as the process of learning. So our objectives would be keeping in mind the learner-centered approach. Learner-centered approach makes use of ICT to help the learner make sense of the task assigned and learn what is required. So one can make use of worksheets, informative and communicative tools of ICT either for individual learning or small group learning. A teacher may also use a combination of two approaches. That means she can alternatively use a teacher-centered approach and also a learner-centered approach. So here, the teacher dispenses knowledge and the learner has to take things on trust. So teacher simply creates the condition for the learner to explore and to discover knowledge. So keeping in mind what approaches one is utilizing, one can plan the learning objectives accordingly. One can also use ICT for collaboration. That means ICT can be used for creating a learner-centered approach. Can, it can, one can use to improve the interaction between student and student, student and teacher. And here one can make use of wikis, Yahoo groups, Google groups and of course social networking sites. ICT can also be used for the purpose in assessment. Assessment could be process-based assessment or it could be product-based assessment. Product is the final outcome and process is the manner in which you have arrived at the outcome. E-portfolios, online rubrics, digital concept mapping can be used for the purpose of assessment. ICT can be used in the context of learning process also. It can be used for individual learning, for example, computer assisted instruction or self-regulatory learning. Or it can be used for group learning that is through online lectures, open educational resources, both in synchronous or asynchronous group interaction. In the context of learning process, one can also use for collaborative learning. Making use of cooperative structures would enable the teacher to capitalize on the skills and competence of the different learners. One can use it in face-to-face -face environment in the classroom or one can use it in online environment via Skype or chats. So, we were looking at the four stages of integration of ICT. Transforming stage, infusing stage, applying stage and emerging stage. So, in these different stages, we have seen that we need to formulate the learning objectives. So, keeping in mind what kind of approach we have been using, we formulate the learning objectives. The learning objectives, which is based on ABCD model, could involve all the, uh, all the four components. For example, at the end of the topic, we may say that the elementary students will be able to verbally describe the present energy situation in India and the ways to conserve it on a mind map with 100% accuracy. So in this example, A is the elementary student, B is verbally described, C is on the mind map and D is with 100% accuracy. So we find that the learning objectives make use of all the four components. Also, based on the content, we need to select app technologies that can be used for learning the topic. Now, at this particular stage, we may make use of softwares such as multimedia courseware or we can make use of web-based resources. We can use communication tools such as voice chat, textual discussion forums or video conferencing. The teacher can also make use of mind tools such as concept mapping tools and multimedia author authoring tools. 
But how does one select technology? The selection of particular technology should be based on certain criteria such as why it is needed for the topic, what added values the technology can offer, how can the technology support instructional process, does it increase the motivation of the students. If these criteria are fulfilled, then using a particular technology would be worthwhile. One can also have some more criteria. For example, does a particular technology provide unique instructional capabilities such as helping students visualize data problems or tracking learning progress? Does it support for innovative instructional approaches such as collaborative learning or problem-based learning? Does it increase teacher productivity or student knowledge construction? Hence, knowing about the different approaches that a teacher is going to utilize in the classroom is very essential. If a teacher is going to be having a teacher-centered approach, she would use a different ICT. And if she wants to create a collaborative environment, the use of ICT would be more catering to collaborative learning. Now, details of ICT integration should be provided separately for each lesson as well as for the entire topic. It is important to answer some questions. What ICT based resources such as websites, CD-ROM, programs or learning objects will be used? For which aspect of the lesson or for which content are you going to be making use of a particular ICT based resources? So, the strategies for implementation should be very clearly mentioned in each of the lesson plans. In this particular model, the model does not get completed without reflection and further suggestion. Using an ICT integrated lesson to, uh, to conduct a particular or to teach a particular content is incomplete without reflection. Reflection enables us to focus on certain things. Was the technology that was utilized appropriate? What are the advantages or the strengths of using a particular type of technology? What is the limitation of using a particular type of technology? What can be done to possibly improve? What if the technology fails in the classroom? What if you do not get the appropriate resources in the classroom? So what is going to be your backup plan? What is going to be your contingency plan? These things have to be reflected upon and these suggestions need to be integrated in the further lessons that one is going to be conducting. Using ICT is not a magic. And when a teacher makes use of ICT in the classroom, she need not be always successful. So reflections help us to deliberate upon certain things that a teacher can do in the classroom. That is, she can look at the possible suggestions. Moreover, it is essential to keep in mind different kinds of students require different kinds of ICT tools. So then, what could be the alternative technology? Could there be different instructional methods and activities? What would be the assessment approaches? And what would be the ways to improve the integration of ICT? At this junction, it is necessary to remember that a teacher is going to be a classroom manager, managing her teaching, teaching learning process as well as ICT. Let us then deliberate on the use of ICT in the assessment process. Till now, we have seen how ICT can be integrated in a teaching learning process. But no teaching learning process is complete without the assessment process. So can a teacher use ICT in the assessment process? And if yes, then what are the benefits of integration of ICT in the assessment process? The first benefit is it gives flexibility. To whom? To the students. The students can take part in formative as well as summative assessment at any time, any place without any task restriction. Geographical distances or, or separations due to time can be taken care by using ICT. On-demand examinations is one such example of the flexibility that students can have in assessment as a result of using ICT in the assessment process. Also, 
assessment can be used as a tool for learning. The students have, an, have enough opportunity of learning while engaged in such assessment tasks or processes. Most test serving systems offer profound feedback and students progress is also available online due to which learning is enhanced. The feedback is immediate. Also, such systems provide clarifications to students' errors. The students are able to analyze their own progress in a more effective manner. Benefit of integrating ICT in the assessment process uh, shifts the responsibility of students for their learning. So students are made responsible for their learning and flexibility is one condition for giving more responsibility to the learner. When I am ready as a learner, I can ask for an examination and that is what on-demand examination is all about. So if a learner feels he has not been he's not prepared up to the mark, he can defer from taking the examination. A second condition is sharing responsibility in the process of assessment. The use of electronic peer assessment and electronic portfolios are example of electronic assessment methods that are in line with this principle. So peer assessment helps enables a, uh, an individual to perform much better. Assessment can take place both of product as well as process. In most electronic portfolios as well as electronic peer assessment systems, product that is the final outcome of learning as well as the process assessment is done. Another very significant benefit of integration of ICT in the assessment process is an opportunity to use a variety of assessment instruments. ICT enhances the permanent availability of a set of different assessments instruments starting from measuring knowledge, reproduction by standardized tests to the assessment of skills by electronic portfolios or peer assessment systems. Authenticity of assessment is very high when we make use of ICT in the assessment process. One can utilize real life cases, electronic simulation games, etc. which are available online. It makes it feasible to access different aspects of students' competencies in an authentic way. In the assessment process, the student is active participant when ICT is used. One aspect of this is the student's responsibility to develop criteria for assessment through interaction and discussion with teachers. So electronic peer assessment is one example. A second aspect is the use of assessment tasks that ask students to actively construct a solution to the task. Examples are online simulations and electronic case-based assessment instruments. So, to conclude, we can say that teaching in the internet age means we must teach tomorrow's skill today. In today's class, so we have seen the use of ICT, the integration of ICT in the teaching learning process that is in pedagogies. We have also looked at the use of ICT for collaborative purpose and for the purpose of assessment. We also looked at the different models of integrating ICT and we saw that at every stage, every model takes care of the learner's needs, takes, uh, uh, takes care of the learner's need and also utilizes reflections and suggestions to make the further learning more better and effective. Integrating ICT in learning once again is something that as teachers we need to continuously develop. Let us keep in mind that most of us who have become teachers today are, are individuals who were probably born in an era when there was no internet. But we are teaching those students who are born in an era where the internet has been there. So these students are actually digital natives and we teachers are digital migrants and hence it is essential to keep in mind the needs of our, teach, of our students today. So, once again, I would like to say what Jennifer Fleming has said, that teaching in the internet age means we must teach tomorrow's skills today. And for that purpose, a teacher has to be equipped and about ICT and know how ICT can be used and integrated in your day-to-day -day teaching learning process. Thank you.